Hello guys, it's Vivs here from SlideNerd. In this material design video, I'm gonna talk about how we can set up App Compat activity for API 22, which has just come up a week ago at the time of recording this video. Two things to point out before we start. First, I'm there on Udemy. The link of this profile is right below in the description of this video. Here's where I'll be adding my practical courses on Android, iOS, and stuff. Second, if you go to my channel SlideNerd, if you go to playlist over here, you will notice that this video falls under the material design tutorial playlist along with the rest of the material design videos out here. There's also an iOS video series that we have started just now. Be sure to check that out as well. All right, let's begin. My Android Studio is right now set up on the Mac. I'm going to use this Android Studio to import my existing project from GitHub. The way I do that is to select this option here that says check out the project from version control. Select GitHub out of that. It's going to ask me the login and password. Let me enter those. Once I have that entered, I'm just going to click login here. And at this point, it's going to try to confirm with GitHub. It's going to ask me a master password. I don't want to set that right now. I'll click cancel. And yes, you notice here it says clone repository. And I can select which repository I want. In my case, it would be the material design that is being made, which would be material test.git over here. And it says the parent directory is user studio webs directory name is material test. The parent path users web studio projects must exist. All right, let's try to put it somewhere else. I will go to my desktop here, create a folder here that that says Android projects or Android examples and try to put that inside that folder. Say Android examples. And of course, I'll make sure that I don't have a space in between. Otherwise, Android studio complains about that. Okay, there's already a folder with that name. Great, I didn't know that. So Android examples is this folder here. I'm going to click choose. And once I do that, it's going to say clone. I'm going to click the clone button up there and it says cloning the source. In other words, it's simply going to copy everything that is there on GitHub and bring it here. It says check out from version control. Would you like to open it? Yes. So once done, my Android studio opens and on the left window in the project section, I should be able to see my app with all the things that I've been building so far right here. Once the app is started, just jump to your build.gradle file here on the left hand side. The second file which has the module app written on it is the one that we are interested in. So let's take a look at the contents of this file. You notice immediately it says app compact v7 21.0. Now Android recently introduced a new update which is 22.0 point something. And by the time you're watching this, it's quite possible that the update has progressed further. So let's take a look at how we can use API 22 and what are the terms associated with that and what changes we need to make in our code to make 22 work on our devices. Before we start coding, the first place that I would like to take you on a tour would be the Android developer blogspot.n. If you take a look at this site here, they talk about the changes that have been made in App Compact version 22. Take a look at all these controls that they are talking about, which include tint support, and then there's your app compact activity. Now, there are two options as per API 22. One, you either use the app compact activity directly, or two, you use your normal activity, but you use a delegate called the app compact delegate with that normal activity so that you can configure or put things together. Now, this class app compact activity or the delegate is going to manage putting all the boilerplate code that you needed for running on the previous versions together in your material design. Before I make any changes, here's the app running on all three devices at the same time. On the left hand side, I have my API 18 device at the center. There is your lollipop device version 5.0. And on the right hand side, we have API version 22 device running the same app. And you notice that right now there is no difference amongst these apps running on different devices. And that's because we have coded all the boilerplate code that was essential to make the app look the same across the different devices. But if you're starting from scratch, then you can add the action bar app compat activity directly to add your toolbar and do the other version specific boilerplate code within it. So let's go back and change our version in the build.gradle file. I'm going to add the compile SDK version as 22. The build tools version is again going to be 22.0.1. Now make sure that you check what is the latest version for you at the time you're watching this video and go down further and have your dependencies where I've said compile, blah, blah, blah. Here, I'm just going to make it at 22.0.1. And with that, we should be able to run stuff, right? And at the bottom here, I get a message at this point that says a newer version of Android support app compat that is greater than 22.0.1 is available. That is 22.1.1. So let's go and switch it to 22.1.1. And at this point, I have to just click sync now at the top right corner. As you notice this option, 
and Gradle build is again going to run and try to build the entire project with the newer APIs that I just listed in the dependencies. The new process has been illustrated a bit more by Chris Baines on his blog here. Be sure to take a look at this post and I'll be adding a link to this post right below in the description of this video. The next post here covers the sequence of steps that you need, that you need to run in order to get app compat activity working. Let's take a look at that. It says first add this dependency which we just did right now. Second it says make sure your main activity extends the app compat activity or if you use the normal activity then go for the app compat delegate as well and I will cover that shortly. Take a look at the manifest or style or theme changes at the bottom here and then finally we have the app theme running with the new version of the theme. And also it seems that you don't need a styles v21 folder anymore because the basic styles.xml file itself handles all the version specific code that you previously needed to make stuff work. So now on the left side when I go to my app and take a look at the package activities here I have a lot of activities out there. If you open any one of them you will notice this message here that says android.support.v7.actionbar activity is deprecated and that's exactly the problem we need to fix this with the new activity which would be our app compat activity let's take a look at what the documentation of app compat activity says so if you google app compat activity you find out it says the base class for activities that use the support library action bar features you can add an action bar to your activity when running on api level 7 or higher by extending from your activity in other words you have two choices one you extend this and you do what you want two you don't extend this you take the other activity and then you use something called the app compat delegate let me show you what that looks like if you don't want to extend the app compat activity that is covered in this nice blog post over here if you take a look they first add the toolbar in xml over here they modify the theme to support the theme dot app compat dot no action bar take a look at that and they have used the color primary color primary dark color secondary and other items of interest now if you go to the main activity here they have extended the activity class and they have implemented the app compat callback method now let's take a look at what this app compat callback is all about you open the documentation for that you notice it says implement this in order for app compat to be able to be callback in certain situations now take a look at those two methods out there and that's exactly what they are overriding over here and they are saying let's leave this method empty for now once you do that you have to mirror the methods of your activities life cycle for example you go here and you see delegate is app compat delegate dot create now it has a static create method out there inside that you need to call delegate dot on create the set content view and set support action bar that is the step that you're interested going back to our code i'm going to replace the action bar activity with the app compat activity out here once the import is complete you notice that i don't have to change anything out there at the top just make sure that you have the v4.app or the v7.app everywhere and there's of course a package being imported two times here let me remove that once i have added the class everything looks fine here if you take a look on the left side for styles and see what changes that we need to make i already have three styles.xml files i'm not going to remove them because i'm using transitions in my video and at the time of recording this video there is no post that talks about what changes are needed as far as transitions are concerned in the meantime if you do know what changes are needed be sure to let me know in the comments below and i'm not going to change anything else in the project but if you're starting out for the very first time then you can directly use the app compat activity or its delegate to get your stuff done so before we wrap up let me also show you what's going on inside the styles.xml file there are two of them there's a styles.xml and there's a styles v21.xml now i tried deleting the v21.xml i was under the impression that transitions will be handled automatically but that's not the case if you delete this file it contains settings about the transitions the fade duration and etc so if you delete it the transitions don't happen smoothly anymore but on the other hand if you notice i have reduced the amount of clutter in this file by removing the color primary color secondary and other attributes which i have already defined in the styles.xml file and you should do it the same way to avoid code duplication now one more thing to note would be that app compat has added a new alert dialog here that lets you create the same looking dialog across different versions of android device all you have to do is use this frame layout if you want to add your own views to that layout and there are certain other properties that you can customize out there and there are also controls like app compat button app compat auto complete text view and so on now the question here is when should you use them it says here you should really need to manually use this class 
when writing custom views now is that really the case do you think you should extend it when you're writing custom views or should you use it every time i would like to hear about that from you guys in the comments below so let's take a look at the app after the modification it looks the same it works the same the transitions out here are still working and all the other features seem to work now transitions note that i have made them very slow so that you can understand how the transitions work so with that i'm going to resume in the next video where i left off previously and that would be to go to our search tab and add our search view and let the user filter through the results and see them in the recycler view over here in the meantime go to google type slide node udemy you will find our account where we add practical stuff our social accounts on slide node twitter and slide node facebook the code for this video and the rest of the videos is out there on slide node github if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide node and let us know your thoughts in the comments below Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. Have a nice day.